Hey everyone, today we are here in front of my rack of four 75 gallon aquariums. And we have a lot of really cool fish in these tanks. But we're gonna focus in on the one up over my shoulder here. We're gonna do a species spotlight on possibly the rarest African cichlid I have here. This is actually a cichlid from North Africa. Uh, it is a desert cichlid, uh, yeah, desert cichlid from the Oasis Lakes of Eritrea. It's a little south of Egypt, next to the Red Sea. It comes from extreme environments. Very hot water, very alkaline. Uh, it is also a beautiful fish. So we're gonna check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on the Danakilia shuka ray. Let's first cover off on the name again, in case you missed it, because this is a bit of a mouthful. What we're looking at here is the Danakilia species Shukare, and this actually isn't scientifically described yet. So what we're doing here is identifying the genus Danakilia, and then we're saying species Shukare, which is the commonly accepted identification for this fish until it gets described. And that is simply a reference to its collection point in the Shukare River. And that touches on one of the most interesting things about this fish, where they come from. Most African cichlids in the hobby are from one of the rift lakes, like Malawi or Tanganyika, or from the river systems in West Africa. But these are from the deserts of North Africa, and they come from oases, lakes, and rivers that are typically fed by hot springs. This is a photo from a scientific paper describing another Danakilia species. And it's a great representation of what we're talking about. You can see for miles around, it's nothing but desert. And then you happen to have this one lake fed by hot springs. And these fish just thrive in there. To be clear, that's not the collection point for this specific species, but it's a great representation of where these fish come from in their natural environment. And I've tried to mimic their environment as best we can in the home aquarium. We keep our Danakilia in a 75 gallon aquarium with uh, very warm and hard water. We keep them at a minimum of 85 degrees. Other very experienced keepers of this fish that I've spoken with sometimes keep them upwards into the mid 90s. But 85 is definitely the minimum that you'll hear people recommend. And they also do require very hard water with a high pH. I typically lean more towards the camp of saying fish are adaptable. And, and, and these are, they're adaptable. They're, they're actually very hardy, but I wouldn't tempt fate with this particular species. They are one of those fish that I, I do believe a uh, warrant making sure you keep a uh, water that is uh, more, more closely related to their natural environment. Uh, for me, that's not an issue because the water out of my faucet is basically liquid rock. Uh, but for anyone else living in softer water areas, you might want to consider uh, you know, putting some crushed coral or uh, other, doing other things to raise the hardness of your water. In terms of aquascaping, I've tried to mimic the shallow areas of you know, a, one of these desert rivers or lakes. I've used very fine white sand that would definitely be kind of blown in uh, from, from the wind. And I've also used these rocks to try to create a, a slope up towards one side of the tank, where I then have these, these artificial plants. Um, the, the only vegetation you're gonna find in these types of areas are very hardy reeds. Uh, but there's, you don't really see reeds for sale in the hobby, for good reason too. So these were the closest artificial proxy I could find. Uh, they're not perfect, but they, they get the point across. And then we also have some kind of branches in here. Uh, there are some species of tree that thrive in these o desert oases. Um, this is manzanita wood, so it's not a biotope accurate, but I figured in nature, some of those tree branches would probably drop down into the water. What we're looking at here are some of the females of my group. And uh, this is one of those African cichlids where the females definitely don't look as good as the males. Uh, and to be honest, the females actually look pretty drab. 
they're a, a black or you know very dark green color not not you know a beautiful fish really but the males the males in my opinion are showstoppers and in this group right now we un unfortunately only have one male that's actually fully colored up uh, you see him kind of peeking around here in the footage there he is a and they turn a a beautiful bright lime green and when they really mature they get this big nuchal hump on their head uh, that uh, turns almost more of a yellow so I, I think it's a beautiful fish um, I'm excited for the rest of the males in my tank to really color up uh, they have all started to uh, but this guy has kind of reached the finish line first and I kind of wanted just to get the video out to share with you guys um, I, I think yeah I could I could watch this guy swim back and forth all day he's beautiful and that's another really good benefit of this fish they are so active you will never see them not moving and that can be pretty annoying if you're trying to take photos or video of them <laughs> but if you're just uh, actually there in person watching them it's, it's very enjoyable because it makes for a very active tank uh, and it, uh, more so than even most other African cichlids uh, these guys they, they just dart back and forth and they they love swimming around all levels of the aquarium even up near the surface um, which is a little different for african cichlids they're so active they actually create these little waves on the surface of the tank as they swim back and forth it's uh, it's pretty interesting in terms of feeding they're actually pretty simple uh, they'll eat pretty much any pellet or flake food that you'll put in the tank I feed these fish the exact same food that I feed any other of my cichlids. Uh, and they, they do require a lot of food, which is, which is a, an important note. Because they are so fast and they live in such hot water, they have very fast metabolisms. So uh, if you think that they need X amount of food, I would probably increase it by 50% even uh, because they burn through it pretty quickly. Uh, almost imagine if you were a marathon runner and you were just running around all day long. You're, you're going to need to eat a lot more food. It's kind of the same idea with these fish. So you got to keep that in mind. And that also equates to needing to do more water changes, most likely, in order to maintain good water quality. So, uh, yeah, you definitely want to think about that. Um, but I, I think the, the little extra effort is worth it because this, this is such a unique species. Uh, not very many people keep this fish, which is, which is a shame, you know? Uh, and, and you know, I, I, I tend to say that about a lot of the fish that I share with you guys. But you know, that's about all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this fish. I, I, I really, really like it. It's, it's so, um, it's such a, it's a rewarding species to keep. So I, I recommend you consider adding this to your hobby at some point. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, drop them below. Um, I really do enjoy engaging with y'all. Um, and other than that, I will see you next time. Take it easy.